it appears as though it's going to be another violent turn in the Pope leg of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We've gone around, um, no, no empire started, very little production, very little trade in progress. Actually, I want to talk about this before I go on. Um, I've been kind of annoyed with this dice rolling mechanism for a while, but I just haven't really had time to come up with something different. Um, I don't know if there's a perfect thing out there. This definitely isn't it. Um, one of the main problems I've come to understand is that I'm rolling so many dice that they kind of just average out, so whoever has the most dice tends to win every time, and I really wanted more kind of trade-off, right? More, you know, both people could lose, but one person would, might be the ultimate winner, per se. Um, that hasn't really been happening. However, I did just see an example of where, where someone had lower a lower amount of dice, and they actually won. So Melky and Giraffe were trading, the Romans and the Ottomans. Uh, the Romans initiated. The Romans had a clear advantage. It was 11, to, 11 dice to 6, and Melky won out. So, I don't know what, what that means, but um, at least it was something a little more surprising than, than usual. Um, I do want to change this die rolling, though. Uh, so now we're in the maneuver. This, and I made a mistake. I started with Cowboy. I wasn't supposed to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go through with it anyway. Uh, giraffe starting the turn. I wasn't really thinking it should have been who should have gone first should have been the Pharaonic Egyptians but it was cowboy so English fighting English the English Civil War is raging on in South America they're not touching each other on uh, the island it's because yeah, cowboy doesn't he's not he's not dumb he's not gonna throw all those units against all those units in Scotland there he's holding tight but it looks like he's probably gonna take over South America right now he's sending in some knights and some catapults, and some knights, and some spearmen. And it was a clean sweep. The blue English now control South America, except for this little boat here, um, this orange English boat, which is the original English, is in South America. My cat wants to be let out. I'll do it soon, very soon. Um, just wanted to note before I let you out that uh, there's something kind of interesting with this dive system and this civil war. So normally, if someone wants to steal a culture card from someone, they have to pay double the age in victory dice. So, uh, just an idea. This this late last con uh, fight between Cowboy and Melky. Uh, Cowboy ended up with two victory dice right here in um, the Andes. So he would we, he would have been able to steal like a a one an age one card. Uh, however, these cards underneath the English here are shared by both both parts of the Civil War because they were um, they belonged to the English before the war broke out. These cards here are ones that Cowboy has um, dedicated to just his particular branch of the English. Melky's English haven't he hasn't been working on his um, his people at all. There would be another column of cards here that would be for that. So. The upshot of that, if if Cowboy wants to, in a way, steal a card, at least relative to Melky, uh, from the English, all he has to do is spend the age in Victory Dice, which is what it would cost to destroy it. So that gets rid of that culture cultural effect from um, Melky's brand of English, and then he can just move it over to here. Right now, Cowboy gets to access all of these cards, right? But if they're over here, he gets to access them and Melky doesn't. I don't know if that's if that's being clear to you, but I'm a little distracted. My cat really wants to go outside. Well, she's outside now. I thought it would be fun while while she runs away from us to check in on the mound since we brought Pegasus back. See how it's been doing. Um, I'm gonna have to get rid of it soon, I think, because I'm gonna move out of this house. Uh, but it'll be fun to see how the, um, what kind of life has developed under there in the six months since its, since its creation. Runs finished her maneuver. She had actually both of her empires. She only had, she has two empires. Once again, didn't start a new one. Um, she had both of them maneuver, which she co cost her point. If you do the same action with two different empires, you lose a point. Not a problem for her. She has so many points. Um... Pretty effective maneuvers, though. She she smashed the Sudanese in their capital, which took away their money, and left them with just 
two areas. Um, left herself weak here in Egypt. She had a large buildup there, but she felt like she was probably safe because the uh, safe from the Phoenicians coming down because they're all busy up here with um, Melki. What else did she do? Well, she sent her papal states north uh, to the northern part of Italy and had another a big success there. So, tough maneuver for Giraffe. So if the early part of the maneuver phase was rough on Giraffe, both of Runt's empires beating up on her, the latter half was Runt was runt <laughs> was rough I meant to say on cowboy because both flush and milky took some territory from cowboy uh, first flush took a piece of North America Saskatchewan not a lot but uh, something and every little bit counts and then um, milky's Ottomans who if you recall from last time have to maneuver every turn because they're Islamic um, because they're Muslim. Sorry, they have to maneuver every turn because there's a jihad here in northern Italy. So they they don't really want to go in northern Italy, but they have to be moving. So he took some some territory from some, from giraffe, which let him have a musketeer there or a, a rifleman, I guess. And he also took Palestine, which is huge, from cowboy. That was cowboy's capital. So cowboy's gonna lose a donkey ton of Phoenician money. And I gotta check, I think that goes to, I think that goes to the Ottomans, but I'm gonna check on that. And after a mild civilized phase, um, the turn is gonna end with some bit larger discards. We lost the Spanish, the Spanish left us here in Castile, and Carthage is where they last lay. Um, and not a lot to say about that. Big news though, the early Finns are now gone. Um, Melky was able to keep his black counter set, however, he used Phoenix in order to re immediately restart an empire, and that empire was the Russians. So here in the Ukraine, bunch of Russians just popped up. Black counter set probably can keep keep them going until the end of the game, maybe. Um, their scoring isn't the greatest. They have some nice benefits, though. And so, yeah, decent trade rating in ages six and seven. And their their horses are cheap. Um, and they score in Europe and Asia. So if he can just spread out and just, really, they just need to spread out, which is not very good for the black counter set, actually. But he wants to, he wants to keep going with his whole plan, his two-pronged attack on Europe. Um, he, the early Finns weren't doing a lot for him, and so... He has the mighty Russians now. Let's do scoring. Let's see where, how everyone's doing. Well, definitely a surprising scoring for me. The first thing you'll notice is that Cowboy and Flush are now tied, tied uh, and they're both ahead of Melky. Uh, Melky scored hardly anything. The, the loss of the English, and I guess he, you know, the, the Finns were gone and the Ottomans aren't scoring too high. He doesn't have like a big score. Who else did not score well? <laughs> once, once I amended my mistake, Giraffe scored like two points, hardly anything. Runt still scored 10, but Flush scored 16. I, after I, you know, and here's a case where if all these people were sitting around the table, they'd be paying better attention than I am. I'm really not, um, my head's divided and I'm just not paying as good of attention as I could if, if I had less going on. Um, but there's always a lot going on with this game. And so, uh, yeah, and just excuses, right? Um, but the Portuguese, they scored a ton of points. I didn't even expect it. They, well, not a ton, but they scored five, I think, on their own which is pretty decent with and you know the Japanese are scoring nine and then Siamese two on top of that so that's 16 total that's a lot of points and you know Flush could have even scored more he sent three leaders to the labyrinth this turn none of them were successful um, so I think the dynamic next turn has got to be different I mean Melky and Cowboy are both going to be looking at him right now it looks like Melky's going to be the one to get eliminated I was always thinking it was between Flush and um, and uh, Cowboy, but I guess Melky got a little little lax. I mean, he's been doing a lot of stuff, but it was mainly just trying to bring Cowboy down, and he was successful in that, but in, you know, in all of that, Flush has come back up. So I'm really interested in what's gonna happen. 
luckily for for Cowboy and Milky, Flesh really doesn't have a lot of control over when the elimination is going to happen. That's really in Cowboy's hands right now. Although Milky, his um, Ottomans are, are catching up. He could he could trigger it. And if he can get ahead in points, which I don't think he can, well, I mean, really, he's got to get ahead of Cowboy now because Flush is going to keep scoring, right? If he can get ahead of points, it would get ahead of Cowboy. It would be in his best interest to, um, to trigger the end. Uh, so, wow. We'll see what happens next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Shukua!